The second type of electrolysis that we are going to talk about is the electrolysis of water. So remember at the beginning of this section, I told you that these three different types of electrolysis that we're gonna cover, they're different only in terms of the type of substance that is undergoing electrolysis. The setup, the electrolytic cell, and the concept is the same for all of them. But let's, let's redraw our electrolytic cell for water. And again, we're putting all of the components into the same cell. We don't need to separate them from each other anymore. We are going to need two electrodes, an anode and a cathode. And remember, with electrolysis, when we're doing electrolysis, we are selecting electrodes just based on their ability to be a good conductor and to not produce any unwanted side reactions. So we're not trying to match the material of the anode to the contents of the anode cell, and we're not trying to match the materials of the cathode to match up with the contents of the cathode cell. So for this particular electrolytic cell, because we're doing the electrolysis of water, we want to fill up our, our beaker or whatever it is with water. The electrodes that work best for the electrolysis of water are platinum. Now that's just what works best. It's not the only thing that works. It's just the most effective. And uh, so in here, we're going to have, oops, we're going to have water, H2O, a liquid form. And then again, we want to connect a battery up here that's going to move the electrons um, from one electrode to the other. Now, one of the challenges with the electrolysis of water, as the electrons are moving, so when the electrons are being, they're being spit out by the battery and they're being pushed down this wire, the electrons come down this electrode and then they move across from one electrode to the other and then they go back up to the battery to complete the circuit. So in order for this reaction to work, the electrons have to be able to move from one electrode to the other. And one of the problems with the electrolysis of water is that water actually isn't a very good conductor of electricity, even though you know we, we think that it is in the sense of you don't want to bring your toaster into the bathtub with you, that's very true. But in a situation like this, water is not a great conductor. And so what people have found by experimenting is that if you add a, a dilute solution of acid to this, it won't interfere with the electrolysis reaction and it will help to increase the conductivity between the two electrodes. So 0.1 molar concentration, and we're just gonna write H plus because it literally could be any strong acid that's gonna make this reaction work. And um, again, not have any unwanted side effects and just increasing the conductivity. So our overall reaction when we're doing the electrolysis of water, and we know from trial and error and experimentation, the overall reaction is that we have two water molecules, liquid, and they are producing two molecules of H2 gas and one molecule of O2 gas. Well, that's our overall reaction. The half reactions for this we have two what so the half reactions for this are kind of funny. We have two water molecules and they are producing the O2 molecule and they also produce four H plus ions. Those are gonna be aqueous. And this is the oxidation reaction. So we're producing in this four electrons. Those four H plus ions that are produced are the reactants of the second half reaction. The four H plus ions pick up four electrons, 
and that is where we get the two molecules of H2 gas. Now, just to be clear, just to make sure it's perfectly clear, the H plus ions that are needed for this half reaction are coming from the previous half reaction, not, um, not needed by addition. That's not why we're adding it into this solution. Remember, this is being added just simply to increase conductivity. Now, of course, some of this H plus, I'm sure, is reacting in this half reaction, um, but it's not the only source of H plus. So if we wanted to figure out, let's see, let's first figure out what kind of voltage do we need to actually do this? What is the necessary voltage? Let's say you wanted to do this in your backyard. And how big of a battery would you actually need to get this reaction to work? So again, in order to do that, we've got to, first of all, we have to find the voltages from our table of half reactions. And I've gone ahead and looked them up so we don't have to keep go flipping back and forth to that table anymore. You're probably saying, oh my gosh, thank goodness. I'm so tired of looking at that. So here are the voltages for those half reactions. And uh, actually, I'm going to double, I'm very quickly double checking the water reaction because I want to make sure that I'm looking at the most current one, 1 1.229. Our data table says 1.229, so I will change that. So um, to calculate the necessary voltage, first thing we have to do is look up the half reaction voltages, and then we have to plug them correctly into E cell, cathode minus anode, reduction, minus oxidation. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. So 0 minus 1.229 gives us negative 1.3-ish volts. This means, like in English, what this means is that you only need 1.3 volts to make this reaction work. You could use a 9-volt battery to make this reaction work. And in fact, I've done it with lots of middle schoolers. Um, so the other thing that I want to want to address on this question is, so this would be something like, let's say you wanted to do electrolysis of water for your own personal entertainment and your goal in the electrolysis in your backyard, let's say you had the goal of collecting oxygen gas. So you wanted to just um, collect all that oxygen ga gas and do something fun with it, like maybe light it on fire, put it in a balloon and light it on fire. So if you wanted to collect the oxygen gas from this reaction, how would you go about doing that? Well, you might think initially you could just, you know, close this up so that all the gas that was being generated would be trapped and wouldn't escape into the atmosphere and you would be able to collect it that way. And that, that's true as long as you don't mind getting a mixture of oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. What if you only wanted the oxygen gas? You didn't want any hydrogen gas in there. So if you only wanted the oxygen gas, then you would have to make a different type of enclosure, one that just enclosed maybe just this guy right here, or one that enclosed just this guy right here. The gases in this elect electrolysis reaction, the gases are being generated along the surface of the electrodes. And then they're bubbling up because they're gases, they're just bubbling up to the top. And so if you could trap this, like put some type of container over the top of it, you could fill it up with all of these bubbles of gas. Those are circles, not O's. So if you wanted to catch the O2 gas, you could cover up your electrodes like this and trap the gas in there. Your trick then would be to know, you'd have to figure out which electrode has the oxygen gas and which electrode has the hydrogen gas. So you could get, get it right and trap the correct gas. Let's, let's see how we could answer that 
question. Where is the, what are we trying to get? The oxygen gas. Where is the O2 gas in this reaction? So what we want to do to answer this question is go back up to our half reactions. We want to look at our half reactions and we want to find the half reaction that is generating O2 gas. And so it looks like it's, it's this guy right here. This is where the O2 gas is being generated. And so now we've identified it. Now we have to figure out what well, we already have figured out. Our next job would be to figure out if it's oxidation or reduction. So we already know that it's an oxidation rea reaction that's generating the O2 gas. And so now our next job, let me clean up my drawing here. Our next job is to figure out where in this cell, where is the oxidation taking place? And where is the reduction taking place? And we're going to figure that out by using our understanding of oxidation versus reduction. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. So electrons are leaving that half reaction. And if we look at the direction that we drew electrons moving through this reaction, we're drawing them going this way like that, out the battery, down this electrode. So this side that I'm drawing on right now, this is where the electrons are being gained because the electrons are being shoved down onto this side. And now where I'm drawing up here, this is where the electrons are being lost. They're being given up and pushed out of that particular electrode. So this is the site of the oxidation And this is the site of the reduction. This is the site where the O2 gas is being generated. And this is the site where the H2 gas is being generated.